Hey everybody, today we are going to learn how to use Autodesk products to sculpt and add textural detail to our already UV mapped models. So for this little follow along, we're going to use a coin model. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up this coin file and the, uh, we'll let Maya boot up here. But the first thing I wanna kind of show you is how this model was created. And it's really important to see the edge flow and topology of this model to kind of understand why uh, we built it the way we did. So let's get this model open and here you go. So as you can see, we have kind of the basic coin uh, set up, a, a very cylindrical map, but I went ahead and left the coin I started with. And you'll notice one thing that this coin and this geometry is missing is triangles. Uh, triangles do not tend to smooth very well and the idea of sculpting is to take a low polygon object and smooth it millions and millions of times sometimes so we can paint detail in it. So if I just do my smooth preview mode, you can see it smooths rather well and nice and clean. And so I went ahead and took a cylinder and I deleted some edges and I used my multi-cut tool to go ahead and add these edge loops. Also another important part of the sculpting process is you wanna make sure all of your edges are not those fake sharp CG edges, but like I have here, I have a nice beveled edge. So now that we have that, let me turn this on. I went ahead and smoothed that model a few times. And once that model is smoothed, it's very important that when you're ready to sculpt, you do a few things. So first we're gonna delete all by type history and that's under your edit key. So we're gonna go ahead and hit that that's gonna delete anything we may have, uh, or tools we may have applied to our object. And the next thing we're gonna do is do a modify freeze transformations. Now what that will do is reset all our values to zeros and ones. And that will kinda of help Maya communicate with Mudbox and not confuse itself over what's going on. Now this next step really differs depending on the object. Um, I'm a big fan of uh, building my objects the size that they would really be. Uh, but since we're working in centimeters here, the coin obviously is only a few centimeters big and that's okay. But if we were building something like a couch or uh, a human, we would need a lot bigger model. So some folks will actually go and scale their models rather large. So I could go in and I could type 100 times by 100 times all the way up and I could scale my model much larger. If you're going to do that, and I highly suggest do it just out of practice, make sure you go back and you do a freeze transformations again to reset these values to one. Now with that scaled really big, the next step is let's make sure we have our UVs laid out. Now you can see I have uh, pretty decent UVs here. I have them in my, my setup so everything's looking pretty good. Uh, I may wanna go ahead and flip this shell. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I can use my flip position or I can go to modify flip, I believe, there it is. and have that ready to go. Everything's contained in the box. If I turn my checkerboard pattern on, pattern on, you can see everything is pretty much a perfect square. And that's gonna be really important as we move forward. So all is looking well with the UVs. I've scaled my model up. I do one last check to make sure I don't have any history, which I do. So I'll make sure I delete that history all by type. It's a good practice to kind of follow. The less things Maya has to think about, the better. And now you have two options. One option is you can do a file export and you could export this as a FBX or an OBJ. Um, we can easily go in here and kind of see those options. So for instance, your FBX would be right here. Your OBJ is just slightly beneath it. Uh, but if you've downloaded Maya 2017 and you've also downloaded Autodesk Mudbox, 2017, you can actually do a pretty cool thing. So we're gonna to go to file, and we're gonna go and send this to Mudbox. So now that it's ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and hit send to Mudbox, and it's gonna to connect to Mudbox and open up that program for us. All right, so then you can see it opens up Mudbox here, and there's our coin. So what exactly is Mudbox? Well, Mudbox is actually gonna read our UV map or our coloring book page, and it's going to allow us to paint detail. 
And the painting or the sculpting of detail is actually really cool. So I'm gonna start by going ahead and clicking on this word sculpt, and I'm gonna start building layers to sculpt. And um, let's go ahead and hit the little new layer for sculpt layer one. And before I get started with anything, I'm gonna do a few changes in Mudbox. I'm gonna do, anytime I add a subdivision or I smooth this, because in Mudbox we're gonna smooth it way more than we would in Maya, I'm gonna go ahead and click on add new subdivision level options, and I wanna make sure subdivide UVs and smooth UVs all are checked. So once that happens and I hit okay, I can start with my process. So we can see we have our file here, and the next step is to divide it. Now we could do mesh add new division, but what I'm gonna do on sculpt layer one is hit shift and D. And what that will do, you can start seeing the more you hit shift and D, it's doubling and tripling our polygons. So keep going forward, keep going forward. And I'm gonna add about six or seven divisions. And you can see once you hit about the seventh, it takes a little bit longer. But if we look very closely and I'll hit W, you can see how tiny the divisions are now. Now, if we did not build this file correctly, it, it would not come out nicely. Uh, we have our UVs in the UV view. You can see that they've been divided nicely. And the reason these are divided nicely is because back here, I hit these subdivision options and I check those subdivide UVs, smooth UVs. So those have been checked, that's why it looks good. Now, some hot keys. Before you get started, B is for brush. And if you hit your brush key and move it up and down, uh, it will react. M is for magnitude, and if you hold M as in magnitude and lift it up and down, it will react to that as well. And then shift will do a lot of smoothing techniques. So what I tend to do is use my Wacom tablet and not my mouse at this point, but let's go ahead and just sculpt. So let's go to sculpting tools, and let's learn first what this is doing. So on sculpt layer one, I'm gonna hold B as in brush, and I'm gonna shrink my brush kind of small, and I'm gonna just try to write my name on here. So I'm gonna write an M, an A, and a T, and a T. Now, nothing happened. Okay, why didn't that happen? Well, I'm gonna do a quick undo, and I'm gonna up my magnitude, because right now my strength of my brush or my magnitude is very low. So if I raise it, let's see what happens. Ah, look at that. And draw my name. Pretty amazing. And what it did is actually lift the geometry off of the page. And what it's doing is actually eventually going to translate that into the UV map. So if uh, a normal click lifts, if I hold my control key down, I can actually push in or make a recess into my geometry. So normally, just painting with a normal brush, it would lift things and holding control, it will push things in. And this is all based off of pressure sensitivity. So if you have a really nice tablet, you can get in and do a lot of neat things. Now the shift key, the shift key is kind of cool, and let me raise my brush size up a little bit more so we can get more area to cover. The shift key will actually smooth, you can see it's kind of smoothing out areas. And it will kind of smooth areas out and make them a bit more uniform. So that's kind of nice, cool tool. Now, I know what you're saying, this looks absolutely horrible, but the good thing is I have it on a sculpt layer, and just like Photoshop, I can turn layers on and off. I can even go into my layers, and let me raise this open just slightly, and I can play with the strength, so if I painted too heavily, I can lower that quite a bit just to get a little bit. So I don't want this layer, so I'm gonna hit the delete key. I'm gonna add a new layer, and we'll work off that. So that's your sculpt tool. You also have grab tools, pinch tools, flatten tools. So maybe your coin has kind of gone through a, a kind of strange uh, event where it got hit to the ground. So let's hit B and we can go in there and we can kind of start to flatten geometry and we can really make the strength a little higher. And you can see it, it just, can, you can start adding that wear and tear um, and it's really nice. We have the scrape tool. Scrape tool works really good for stuff like this. So we can add dings and dents um, and go into our geometry. Now we're not adding new geometry, we're just molding the geometry that's actually there. So I kind of like that. It adds a little more variety to my piece. I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna add a, another layer on top of that. Uh, let's go back to the sculpt tool and let's look at some of the stamps that we have. So stamps are really neat because they're basically like Photoshop brushes. So what I can do, and let's lower the magnitude slightly, 
is I can actually load a stamp and I can paint with that stamp. Look at that. And if I hold control, it will push in. And I can actually use these as ways to add scratches, damage, dents, you name it. And again, I can lower that just slightly and get some really cool effective results. You have all sorts of uh, stamps. You can even click this little arrow and add your own picture to choose from, which we're gonna do here in a few seconds. Let's add another sculpt layer. And let's take that sculpt layer and let's move it in between so the, the scrape layer is on top. And let's go to stencils and see what those do. Now the next tab stencil basically will import an image that you can then go through and you can paint on top of. Now, my magnitude's a little too high here, but you can see it's actually kind of neat. Let's go ahead and hit M and let's lower the magnitude very low. And now just imprint slightly some cool texture. Look at that. Now, my favorite part, since we're doing a coin, um, is why not paint the face of a coin? Instead of going in and sculpting an area, why not import a picture? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the add stencil button, which is just a little arrow. We're gonna hit add stencil, we're gonna scroll down, we're gonna find our folder that I downloaded, which is somewhere, Sculpting 101. And I have this Roosevelt dime, and it loads it. I notice I did nothing with that picture, I just grabbed it off the internet. I'm gonna hit my top view, and I'm gonna scroll out and hit my Roosevelt dime. And I'm gonna arrange it so it kind of matches. Now you can hit Q for visibility, you can hit S for scale, so you can rotate it a little bit. Um, you can use your middle mouse button to move it, your right mouse button to scale up and down. And now, check this out. We can go back to the sculpting tool. We'll take that stamp off so we can just use a normal brush. And look at that. We can start painting an area and notice it's still showing those sculpt uh, the, the scratches that's what I think is so cool about this so I'm painting away getting Roosevelt to show up on our coin and I can hit the smooth tool kind of push some of this back I hit Q occasionally once I have enough I don't really need to see uh, certain areas and I'm going to go and push some back holding the shift key uh, just to get a little bit of a cleaner result. So I think it's a little bit heavy and sometimes I'll let go of that there and there we go. So check this out. Wow, pretty amazing. Now some of it bled through so I can go and get my eraser tool and I can go in the back and this takes a little bit. The eraser tool is kind of slow but we can go and keep scraping over it and it will push away if it kind of bleeds through the uh, model. And uh, not a big deal, it takes a few seconds, but well worth it. So now we have our coin. Let's get the side of the coin going. Let's do another sculpt layer. And let's just pick a stencil, uh, I don't know. We don't really have a coin side, but this is, this is a pretty interesting material. This one could work. So I'm gonna hold my S key and my right mouse button. So I'm gonna zoom out. And I'm gonna just paint a little bit for this uh, for you guys. I'm gonna hit B and lower my brush. I'm gonna do a quick test. Uh, yeah, not really doing anything, right? So I wanna make sure that that layer is visible. So I'm gonna go to my sculpt button and that's what the problem was. And it's coming in a little high and a little too hot, so I'm gonna lower my magnitude even more. And I'm gonna go in and paint. This is not what a side of a coin obviously looks like, but I'm gonna continue to rotate my model and paint the side of a coin. So I'm imprinting like it's wet cement. Now at any point, what I would probably do on this layer is actually lower it quite a bit just to get a subtle texture but there you go. So now we have a pretty cool start of a coin. And you can always go back and you know turn on and off different layers. If you think maybe the Roosevelt is a little too intense, we can turn that back a little bit. And uh, that's the great thing about sculpting with layers. Now when you're done, this is where it really gets cool. When you're completely done, you go up here to UV and Maps and extract Texture Map. And we're gonna do a new operation. 
Now what this will do is it's going to translate this 3D sculpting to a picture that you can use to put into a shader. So I'm going to use normal maps and when I click that this big window opens up and this is kind of scary but what it's basically saying is you gave me an original model a low resolution mesh and then you made it really high resolution so I'm going to transfer all of the high resolution to the low resolution model and then I'm going to do that by making it a picture and it kind of gives you a picture of that a smooth model versus a sculpted model turns into this so a few things I change um, is I go to ray casting subdivision the reason is it gets rid of a lot of my uh, settings and it's less for me to worry about and then I change my base name to normal oops normal map alright and I'll find that that coin folder that we had or sculpting 101 so I'll hit save it's a PNG and I'll hit extract give it a few seconds and when it's done give it a second there it's calculating at the bottom we should have a nice file so depending on the size of your model this could take anywhere to a few minutes uh, it, it just really depends on what you're doing but you can see here the uh, normal map is almost complete there it is and now we have this imprinted texture within our normal map and you can even see if I can get as I randomly draw on it that doesn't do you much good you can randomly see the little scraping of the area so I, I really think this is a cool kind of method and let's not save that let's see how it looks in Maya though so I have my low res piece looks pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and add a new material let's add a blend because coins are shiny and in the color we'll deal with that another time but in bump mapping I'm gonna click my checkerboard I'm gonna click the checkerboard box and I'm gonna choose I want to put a file in there and it says okay you're putting a file how do you want to use it well we want to use it as a tangent space normal and that looks good and then there's a tab at the top that says file I'm gonna load that map so sculpting 101 normal map and at first it doesn't look like anything's happening but if I hit 7 on my keyboard oh, excuse me, not 7 pardon me 6 you will see that there it is so you can see it gives us the illusion of highly sculpted detail and you can see even down to the point of the little rustic parts of it now this is gonna look even better in a game engine um, later on and uh, right now Maya is not the best place for normal maps but you can see that uh, it looks rather nice so we're, we're starting to get some cool detail and if I were to render this out uh, in a render of my choice not Arnold let's pick just pick my hardware for instance you can see we have those scrapes so hopefully you learned a lot from that lesson and uh, just remember your your model must be UV mapped it must be beveled um, you shouldn't have very sharp edges and all of these things uh, as, as well as deleting the history and whatnot will lead to a really good sculpt. I'll catch you guys next time and hope you enjoyed the lesson.